And welcome back to the King Report, folks. Let's go straight to scripture in Revelation verse, chapter one and verse five says, in Jesus Christ, the faithful witness and the first begotten of dead and the prince of the kings of the earth has loved us and washed us from our sins by his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and to his father. Folks, that's where the royal priesthood comes from. It comes from almighty God. Our authority to govern comes from almighty God. Our human rights come from almighty God. Our sovereignty comes from almighty God, not from government, not from bureaucrats or political uh, op- uh, figures. It comes from almighty God, the creator, the architect of it all. Well, today we are joined with a very special guest and journalist, Mr. Uh, Jeff Nyquist. He's been a column, columnist for World Net Daily, the Sierra Times, Financial Sense Online. He's also the author of Origins of the Fourth World War, The Fool and His Enemy, as well as co-author of The New Tactics of Global Warfare. Thank you, Mr. Nyquist, for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Well, you know, we're very blessed to be able to talk to you. We saw your interview on um, the Health Ranger with uh, Mike Adams, and I was just so impressed by the depth of your knowledge of the political history, at least in the, the modern period that you were talking about uh, in China. <clears throat> and of course, thank you for your brave work at the Epic Times and the great work the Epic Times is doing, standing up against, as, you, as we said during the break, and, and as you said, the, the ferocious criminals of the Communist Chinese Party. Yes, well, uh, they are ferocious criminals. And uh, the big problem we have is that people, business people and politicians in the United States have gotten into bed with these criminals and they've made deals with these criminals. And now we're in very serious trouble because of it. That's such an incredible point. I just saw something on um, social media that was pointing to the fact that TikTok, which is the most downloaded uh, millennial app on iOS platforms and or um, Android platforms is run by the Chinese and you have to actually give up your personal information to the Chinese Communist Party. Americans don't know this. Yeah, there's a lot of apps that do that. Um, You know, uh, what is it, WeChat? There's a whole bunch of apps out there and they ask you questions about giving up your data when you get on there and you think, what is going on here? The Chinese can gather data through your phone. The phone is an ideal method for spying on each individual person. And of course, we haven't been very careful about guarding our privacy online because we want so bad uh, all of the conveniences of these uh, uh, apps and whatnot that we use. Well, you know, it's interesting that you've, you've focused in on China. Tell us a little bit about, about yourself and your background. How did you get interested in researching and then of course exposing the dangerous communist uh, Chinese Communist Party? Well, uh, I was in graduate school in the 1980s, um, more than 30 years ago. And uh, I met communists. I got invited to communist meetings. I thought, are these people real? They're really communists. Um, They liked me. They wanted to cultivate me and recruit me. And of course, I was on an academic career path. I was in a PhD program. And of course, I didn't want to offend anybody. I just wanted to get through and get my PhD. And so I didn't say anything. I just listened and thought, well, I can learn to see what these people are up to. Well, I learned too much. They liked me too much. They took my silence as agreement. And one day I got invited out to lunch by a lady and she said, they want a commitment. And at first I thought, I was going to say, who are they? But that would be stupid because I knew who they were. Uh, The communist presence at the campus was quite strong. This was at the campus of University of California at Irvine. And uh, so I kind of prevaricated, but walking back from lunch, I thought, no, I have to tell her I am not one of these people. I have to finally register myself. And I said, you know, I can't give these people a commitment. I don't believe in Marxism. I don't believe in what they believe in. Um, sorry. And that was pretty much the beginning of the end of my academic career. They were much more powerful than I had imagined. There is a real orthodoxy in the academy. I remember when I was at the, at the uh, getting my MTS at uh, Divinity School at Harvard. Um, yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean because I was going for my PhD course in comparative religion. 
And um, I, I know what you mean. I didn't want to offend anybody either because it's such a right. powerful juggernaut orthodoxy that if you do, you're in trouble. Yeah, well, you know, you need uh, you need friends and 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 stuff, and you need to you know not offend anybody because you need to not make enemies. Let's put it that way to get through graduate school because anybody can derail you or cause you trouble uh, because you're in a very vulnerable position, and you're you're spending enormous amounts of resources and time to get this degree, and if you get derailed, it's a terrible defeat for you personally. So. Um, but at this point, it was like uh, I had to correct this misunderstanding. The thing is, is that what I realized being there was how extensive their networks were, how influential they were, what kind of things they were doing. And I realized that Ronald Reagan was president. And we thought we were winning the Cold War. Uh, this There was a terrible kind of disconnect somewhere. And I had to get to the bottom of it. I had to find out what was really going on. So that's how I got to be interested in the subject. And of course, when so somebody destroys your career, you think, what else can they do? Who, who else have had their career destroyed? Where are they going and, and who's getting promoted? Are they, if they're able to destroy people, are they putting people into pos influential positions? Now, keep in mind, this was more than 30 years ago. So the question then becomes, for, became for me at the time is where were we headed? we were headed for some kind of disaster. And it also occurred to me, I had an epiphany that the supposed, the Gorbachev reforms and all the changes in both China and the Soviet Union were cosmetic, that they were still working with their communist pals here. I mean, communism is not just a movement in China. It doesn't only exist in this former Soviet Union. Uh, it exists all over the planet. It's a worldwide movement. It's a new form of religion and these people take this religion very seriously. And I think I, I mentioned this on Mike Adams show that uh, you have to see uh, socialism, communism as a religion because it's trying to wipe out all other religions, supplant them and become the text for salvation for mankind, a political salvation, not a spiritual salvation. It's important to uh, you know underscore that. And of course, when you see how uh, successful they are in our society. Our society is uh, very, you know, laissez-faire with ideas. You know, we'll have the marketplace of ideas. We'll debate everything. Well, they, they don't just debate. They destroy. They undermine. They'll, they'll start a whispering campaign that you're psychologically unstable. They'll say you're a child molester. They'll do anything to destroy your reputation and you won't even know what hits you. And they will then shove in their own people who are pretending to be middle of the road Democrats or maybe even Republicans, but they are agents of influence of their religious movement, which is also a subversive movement, a revolutionary movement. And they want to, people won't believe me, you'll believe me, but they want to destroy the United States first and foremost, because if the United States doesn't exist, the world belongs to them. Right, that's 100%. Goodness. Yeah. So it's it's absolutely true what you say about that. You know, my father was uh, freed from the death camp in North Korea, so he's lived under North Korean tyranny before he got out. And so our family really <laughs> owes the debt of gratitude to the U.S. forces, and uh, otherwise we'd be in North Korea. But um, these totalitarian regimes, I mean, even the North Korean regime is a real puppet of China. I don't know if you know about the South Korean president right now, Moon Jae-in, he's extremely leftist and he's almost like moving yes. the country into the hands of Kim Jong-un. So it's a really disturbing thing, even what's happening on the peninsula there. But China in general, so you come out of college and then of course you start understanding that the, 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 the communists have power, worldwide movement. And then of course China, China comes into your focus. What led you, and tell us a little bit about the, 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 the process of understanding the, the mindset, the psychology of the modern Chinese Communist Party, how they operate and how they see America as its arch enemy and want to destroy it. Well, of course, uh, the communist Chinese movement comes out of the, the general communist movement of Marxism, Leninism. And of course, that the first Marxist-Leninist revolution took place in the Soviet in Russia, became the Soviet Union, and of course, in uh, uh, in 1949, the communists won the revolution in China, 
uh, with help from the Russians. The Russians had invaded Manchuria in the last months of World War II, last weeks of World War II, after we dropped the bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They invaded uh, Manchuria, captured Japanese military equipment and handed over to Mao, and then uh, armed Mao with their own equipment. Meanwhile, we had the communists within our own government here in the U.S. who uh, undermined Chiang Kai-shek. And you had the communist victory in the Chinese Civil War. So you had the People's Republic of China forming in 1949. You had, of course, the Korean War. You mentioned your father uh, in, in 1950, in June 1950, uh, on orders from Stalin, uh, uh, Kim... Il-sung invaded uh, South Korea uh, with a kind of blitzkrieg attack. Uh, the United States had mistakenly not put South Korea on the map of countries to be defended from communism. Of course, we rushed in, we sent the Marines in, we held out uh, very desperately together with the uh, South Korean military and then landed at Incheon, drove the communists back all the way up to the Chinese border in which case, uh, I think it was in late November or December 1950, the Chinese came waving across with their volunteer army and drove the U.S. and U.N. forces back uh, back below the DMZ, uh, what became the DMZ. Uh, and the Korean War ended in stalemate in 1953. And of course, uh, the the uh, hostility you know between china communist china and the united states because we fought a war i mean in in the china and the you know people don't know this i mean i have uh relatives uh that were in the korean war um and i think everybody does know somebody that was in the korean war uh that was the chinese were fighting people's republic of china uh and backed by the soviet union by stalin uh, and of course, this legacy, this idea of this Cold War that happened for uh, decades, uh, where there was this nuclear arms race. But what happened uh, is that we somehow came to believe that uh, the Soviet Union collapsed, that communism ceased to exist, that the Warsaw Pact Alliance ceased to exist. Of course, it did. Well, that's a very complicated story, because if you talk to Vladimir Bukovsky, the famous dissident who stole uh, tens of thousands of papers from the Communist Party Soviet Union archive, the collapse of the Soviet Union was a plan. And, uh, and if you look at the works of Anatoly Galitsyn, who wrote in 1984 a book called New Lies for Old, the collapse of the Soviet Union was contemplated in the late 1950s as a plan to disarm the West. Part of that plan was a fake split between communist China and Russia, uh, Galitsyn tells of a lecture by KGB, uh, uh, the KGB chief uh, Alexander Shalepin in 1959. He gave a lecture about how uh, the split between Stalin and Tito resulted in the US coming in and supplying Tito with weapons and supporting uh, communist uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, and they said, you know, we need to have a split with another communist regime so the West will come in and build up that regime. And someone uh, raised their hand and said, Comrade General, what, what country would we have this split with? And he said, China. And of course, next year, the following year, 1960, was the year that, that there seemed to be some kind of rift be developing between China and the Soviet Union. Uh, I have found evidence that that indeed was the case. And I had a chance in the 1990s to meet with a man who was a military defector from uh, Ru Russia, uh, Colonel Stanislav Lunov, who spoke fluent Mandarin and had served in China for the, the uh, main intelligence directorate of the Russian general staff. And he told me details about the conspiracy and death of Lin Biao that supports the idea that it was fabricated. Uh, that is, uh, Lin Biao was eliminated but the flight of his plane into Mongolia and the crash was staged and the Russians knew it. They staged it uh, in co conjunction with the Chinese and it was all to open the door for Kissinger uh, and for Nixon to open China. So this fake split was part of this long range operation which would end in the supposed liberalization of the Warsaw Pact and the relaxation of the US uh, defenses. This is how we've gotten to be overpowered by China, how we have two aircraft carriers, both of them not functioning right now, and the Chinese have two aircraft carriers, both of them functioning, and how it is that we are outnumbered by missiles and nuclear weapons, and all of our nuclear weapons and missiles 
are, you know, a generation out of date and overaged and possibly not even uh, working properly. Yeah, this is this is a major issue. When we were working in Korea, I was doing ministry and my brother was in charge of our international uh, uh, businesses there in Korea uh, under my father. Um, and we were always dealing with the con- Korea, South Korean uh, congressman, house representative, et cetera. And, and he was actually going around to the military giving a lecture on the danger of China and that it's building up its armament. At that point, it, it already had created their uh, the, the second uh, aircraft carrier, as you mentioned. And of course, they were. If you, he did a purchasing parity analysis of the amount of spending that they're doing, they're, they're investing more in the military than America because their labor costs are lower. So when you do the purchasing parity analysis, it actually comes out as much more that they are putting into the military than the U.S. And it's a serious military threat. Now, with China um, growing as it is, and of course being in position where it is. It seems that the elitists of the world, like the Davos Group, the UN is now putting them on again on the Human Rights Council, even though they <laughs> lied about the COVID and 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 all this kind of thing. Um, and it seems like the elites have always been pushing China, China. That's their new baby. It's their new go-to uh, totalitarian regime, the model for everybody else. The COVID now is out. It's spreading. It's um, killing th- hundreds, tens of thousands of people around the world. Uh, which otherwise, who, whom otherwise would be alive if it wasn't for China lying about this virus. What's your view on the virus? How did it begin? Did it really come from bats? And of course, uh, uh, what's the relationship with the Chinese leadership? Well, of course, uh, General Chi Hao Chen, the defense minister of China from 93 to 2003 made a speech, which was translated by the Epoch Times and published in 2005 in English and also in Chinese. This speech described the need for China to wipe out the United States and that uh, the Chinese uh, regime by that time had evolved. The communists realized they, they, they cannot motivate the Chinese people with Marxism, Leninism. They had to use great Han chauvinism and uh, Chinese nationalism. So that's one of the tools that the communists are using in China to motivate uh, the Chinese people. But what General Chi said in his speech was that they had to teach the Chinese people to go out because China's environment is in bad shape. They are grossly overpopulated. It's a country the size of the United States with a population that's uh, about uh, four to five times the population of the United States. So this is uh, this is extraordinary. And uh, they they need uh, Lebensraum, basically what uh, Chi says in the speech, they need living space for the Chinese people. And Chi pointed out if they tried to grab India or they tried to grab Southeast Asia or Japan or Australia, the United States would intervene against them. So since they have to fight the United States, whatever they do, they might as well take the land of the United States and defeat the United States. And this is the task that the CCP has set itself years and years ago. In 1958, Mao Zedong told his generals, I want you to prepare a plan so that we can land troops in Manila and San Francisco. They want to come here to the United States. This has always been in their mind. Uh, They don't think small. Mao Zedong did not think small. Um, He would not have become the leader of the most populous country in the world if he'd thought small. Uh, and they have worked very diligently, the CCP, uh, to uh, achieve their goals. And of course, uh, when Chi made this speech uh, shortly after, they, they built that virology lab in Wuhan. And that was uh, at the tail end of the SARS epidemic uh, in China, which the Taiwanese uh, head of uh, intelligence publicly said was a bioweapon, an early version of what we've got now. And so I do believe uh, if, look, you look at the Indian study, it was withdrawn. The Chinese have developed uh, relationships with universities and labs all over the world. They supply pharmaceuticals to everybody. They've got everybody by the short hairs. Uh, Giving money to people means that they shut up and don't criticize you. Giving money to people means that when you have biologically engineered a virus and you're perfectly capable of looking at the RNA sequence, You look at it and say, oh, no, it's not engineered. It happened by accident. It just mutated that way. I'm sorry. It has four inserts that are fingerprint matches to HIV viruses on a bat virus, on a corona bat virus, 
which has part of a SARS virus attached to it. I'm sorry, this this thing is a monster. It's a behemoth. This thing is a weapon. Um, and people will say, how could it be a weapon? It doesn't kill that many people, right? You normally think of anthrax, right? That's going to kill 98% uh, of the people that get infected by it. Uh, this only kills, you know, a few percentage points of people. Well, you see, that's not the point of the weapon. First of all, the United States has a policy that if anybody uses a biological weapon on us, we nuke them, right? So if they sent a lethal one at us, we would recognize it immediately as a weapon. We would know we were attacked and we would nuke them. But they have set up this uh, this low intent attack, which is even better for them because they have to infect themselves. They have to have an alibi. So in order to infect themselves, they say, look, we didn't attack you. This thing hit us first. Right. But here, the, here's the thing. They believe in what's called asymmetric weapons. And here's how it's an asymmetrical weapon. This virus kills the infirm and the elderly. Primarily, it can kill healthy people, but not that many. It kills basically the infirm and the elderly. Well, what does China have after a half a century of a one-child policy? They have too many elderly people. This is a huge burden on the Chinese state. They're a socialist state with a capitalist adjunct economy. So they have to get rid of these elderly people. So they are euthanizing them. The virus euthanizes them. It provides them with an alibi. And then they get to spread it. They incubated it in Wuhan before the uh, Chinese New Year. 60,000 people went out of Wuhan to the rest of the world from that great migration that occurs every year at Chinese New Year, people flying in and out of China. And they spread it to the rest of the world. Now look at the effect on capitalism. You see, in the West, we don't want to euthanize our sick and elderly. We want to protect them. The instincts of our society are not the instincts of these sick communist uh, uh, criminals. We want to protect our elderly. So what are we doing? We crashed our markets. We're destroying our economies by reacting to this virus to try to protect the elderly and the sick. So they are saying to everybody in China, go back to work. They're spreading rumors in China saying that elderly people in the hospitals are being put in body bags and cremated while they're alive. That there's not enough food in the hospitals. You know the stories, the rumors they've spread on the internet to terrorize elderly people not to go to the hospital. So they've solved their problem. Their, pro their hospitals aren't being flooded by elderly people anymore. The people are just staying home and dying, right? So, so this thing spreads to the West, damages our economies. And what was it yesterday? The Chinese official said, um, being infected with the virus is not an excuse for being slack on our war preparations. That's right. You heard that, right? They're getting ready for war against us. And it doesn't matter. The virus is not supposed to get in the way after all. It's just... Uh, 10 to 50 times worse than the flu. If you're young and you have a strong immune system, you're fine. And if you're sick or you're old, you're dead weight anyway. Goodbye. You see, that's an asymmetrical weapon. So we're crippled by it. They're just sl sloughing it off. And the Russians and the North Koreans and the, the Vietnamese communists and the Cubans and the Venezuelan communists and the Nicaraguan communists and the African communists, they're gonna do the same thing. Good riddance to all the sick and the elderly. After all, we're a socialist society. They're dead weight anyway. Well, that's fascinating. You know, uh, it seems now that with President Trump, and of course, just the American situation in general, we've never turned off economy, our economy like this. Um, it's literally, it's like I, I, I was going through Lowe's the other day and it's like all over the teleprompter, they're talking about, you know, please maintain proper social distancing. It's, it seems like I was in some kind of dystopian movie uh, it was absolutely surreal. But doesn't the economy have to turn back on again? I mean, what is your view on President Trump saying, hey, look, we've got hydroxychloroquine plus zinc. This is showing very promising results. I don't, I'm not gonna wait a year and a half for the clinical test to come in. I'm gonna buy it now and we gotta get people back to work. Is that, is he preparing the nation correctly? I mean, should he be saying, we, should he, shouldn't he be exposing the nefarious uh, intentions of the Chinese Communist Party? Yes, absolutely. We have to uh, uh, hold the Chinese Communists responsible for this. Uh, they have placed the uh, President of the United States into a very difficult, they've painted him into a corner. There is uh, the famous story of the Odyssey where you had uh, Odysseus and he had to guide his ship between two monsters, Scylla and Charybdis, right? And if he gets too close to one monster, they eat his crew 
and destroy a ship. If he gets too close to the other monster, it eats his crew. So he has to go in between them. In this case, it's destroying the economy or destroying himself by allowing too many people to die and then being investigated for not doing what he, you know, they've been trying to impeach him. Imagine what ha would happen if we had an Italy situation here. If you had the hospital emergency rooms flooded with COVID patients. Now, granted in Italy, what the average age of the people dying is 81. Uh, you have, it's tragic nonetheless, you know, people don't want their grandparents or parents, elderly parents to die, but um, they would blame him and he would be ruined. And don't kid yourself for a minute. They would, they would impeach him. They would impeach the vice president. They would, they would have a clean sweep and the country would be upset. They, the, the country does not understand. This is a biological war. We have been attacked by China. And by the way, if we crash our economy to save our elderly, we may lose the country. We may be conquered by China. Because if our economy collapses and we cannot support our military, they will come right after us. They will not hesitate. Well, you know, it's 100%, especially because their own, in, their own internal affairs is falling apart so fast. Look what was happening with Hong Kong and the different riots that were happening in their areas uh, within their own country uh, with, the, uh, with the, the Muslim tribes that they were, they were, they were also uh, imprisoning um, in the West Sichuan area. And I mean, it's just like they were just holding things. I think there's an old proverb in Korea that I mean, in China that China has to always have this external enemy in order to keep itself together. It always has to engage in warfare. Otherwise, it falls apart um, because it's always trying to aim for totalitarianism. Um, with now China moving in the way that it is and, and, uh, uh, and, and preparing, as you say, how should America be preparing? Of course, we have to turn back our economy again, but shouldn't, and of course, President Trump has done the $2.2 trillion stimulus, but I want your ideas on that. I've heard that he is taking control of the printing press from the Federal Reserve and that and there's two options. He may try to make China pay for it. I don't know, what's your view on that? And number two, what if he crashes the dollar and cancels the debt? And then, of course, uh, does a re but uses the money that he has now to build real infrastructures. And even though it crashes, the actual infrastructure will remain. What's your view on those two uh, potential options? Well, the United States doesn't want to repudiate all of its debt, but I think that it could repudiate anything that the Chinese have. Uh, look, if China did this as an attack, I think it can be proved that China caused this to go out intentionally. I think the European leaders, they all have intelligence services. I talked to an intelligence analyst last week. Uh, they read this pretty clearly. They can see what China did. They can see the measures that China took. China incubated that virus in Wuhan on purpose. They knew they had a people to people transmission SARS like illness. They knew it was extremely dangerous. They purposely allowed it to spread in the city. They suppressed the doctors that were trying to warn people. They told the officials to go ahead with the, that, that huge potluck, that 40,000 person potluck that, that caused 10,000 people to be infected at one time. They, they, they brought on the measures intentionally to create a global pandemic. They did this. They did this. And um, we can see this. They should pay for it. They should not be able to recoup any of their money. Uh, they should not be part of the global supply chain. They are making right now 97% of our antibiotics and 80% of the chemicals for our uh, pharmaceuticals. That should not be. That is criminal. It is criminal negligence by our leaders, by our business leaders. Every business leader that has gone into bed with China better get out now. Because there's going to be a, 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 a there's going to be a payment down the road. You got into business with murderers, really, and then you hurt the interests of your own country in league with those murderers. I think there's a word for that. And the same thing with all of our politicians who've been flocking for China. This is serious business, and if we don't turn the corner on this, we're finished. There's not going to be an America. They're going to exterminate us because that's what General Chi Hao Chen said. We have to eliminate all the Americans. It's tragic, but it's them or us. We need their land. They're going to oppose us. Their values are opposed to the values of the CCP. Right. That's what it boils down to.
You're absolutely right. It really is a CCP virus, isn't it? In in Korea, they're calling it now the uh, the Red China virus, basically. <laughs> so, which I think is a better name for it than the coronavirus. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, there's. You mentioned just some things right there, in terms of uh, uh, China's own uh, political s- struggles within. We know that there's a Xi Jinping administration and there's a previous Deng Xiaoping administration, which are also at heads with one another. In your view, in your analysis, uh, or in your communications with individuals, is your view that the Xi Jinping administration may have released this intentionally, or did the Deng Xiaoping uh, uh, previous group release this somehow with people on the inside so that it discredits Xi and it hurts his administration? You have to be very careful about this idea of the black hand against the white hand in China. This kind of game the communists have played with us, it's called the scissors strategy. The fake split game, which was an idea that was created long ago, is an old Sun Tzu strategy. It's a very ancient Chinese strategy. Hold up, entice the enemy, feign disorder, then destroy him. That's feigning disorder. They're preparing, they've never been so strong. They're preparing to destroy us. What, we believe that at the moment that they're ready to strike against us, that they're suddenly at each other's throats and that we can trust that? It may or may not be true, but we cannot uh, make any calculations on the basis of it. You cannot bite at that hook. You'll end up in real trouble. We've already gotten into trouble believing in the split between China and Russia. Look at how united they are. They did that exercise practicing nuking us and invading Alaska here in 2018. Vostok 2018, that was the most massive military exercise in the history of the world. That was about invading the United States. The Chinese have been developing two sets of invasion uh, transports. One set to carry an entire mechanized division, 10 battalions, mechanized slash tank battalions, and, and 10 to carry air cavalry troops, you know, helicopter gunships, helicopters loaded with troops. Those 20 transports have a 6,000 mile range, huh? 6,000 miles from China. Oh, that's California. Oh, I wonder, oh, isn't that funny how that works out? Boy, that's really interesting. This is bombshell information that you're putting out. I think you're the one of the, you're the, one of the journalists that is brave and, and I think has the depth of understanding and knowledge historically and also through current contacts uh, that is revealing this this serious danger to america because in america you know we hear the chinese are bad everything's made in china we got to move you know industry back to america but we don't hear this is you know this is a biological attack and we're already in 21st century warfare it's the beginning of stages of physical attack and we should be as a country understanding that china is a clear and present danger and of course the politicians like hillary or obama that were making deals with the Chinese, et cetera. These are traitorous people and treasonous people. Um, what should America be doing? What should, if you were President Trump, what would you be doing right now with the COVID crisis uh, in the COVID briefings, just generally? What would you be leading the country to do? The first and foremost thing is to orient the country towards its enemy, to understand that China is a deadly enemy of the United States, that they're preparing for war against us, that the Russians are their allies, the Cubans, the North Koreans, the Vietnamese, uh, the, the Venezuelan regime, the South African regime, the Congo regime, the Namibian regime, the Angolan regime, Nepal, Iran, uh, they're all part of a, a new communist bloc. And they are working with the left in this country. We have communist infiltration of our government. They've gotten into the FBI, they've gotten into the CIA, they're in the Justice Department. We have a major treason problem. We need treason trials in this country. If we don't sort out who is the bad guy and who is a good guy, we're we're finished. I went to university, my career was ruined by communists. People who were in league with Beijing, I knew they were running back and forth between Beijing and the United States. We had communist Chinese students at our university as exchange students, and and they were setting up uh, professors who I knew were communists going to Beijing, and they were so excited. Look, uh, this is not this is a this is a extended Cold War. The Cold War did not end in 1991. 
I'm sorry. And if you're a socialist, I'm sorry, but you better get straight right now. They're not going to, the communists in China, they don't care if you're a socialist or not. They don't want you to live. They want the land. They want us off of it. You just happen to be the wrong nationality. We are irredeemably bourgeois, by the way, a socialist term, a Soviet term. The Soviet military literature is that if the United States can't be dealt with properly, they might just decide that we're everybody on this piece of land here in North America is irredeemably bourgeois. It means we have to be exterminated. Friedrich Engels said that the future wars, uh, class wars would result in the extermination of whole classes and races of people. Well, okay, this, this is bombshell and of course very, very uh, weighty, weighty um, uh, predictions you're making. What is the timeline in your view? Uh, because the initial biological uh, attack and warfare has be, been you know, happening and of course now is increasing. Uh, and as Trump turns on the economy, et cetera, takes control, uh, or takes, uh, is doing the stimulus spending, under, uh, you know, bring the Fed under, under him, et cetera. What is your timeline, and potentially we may have a crash of the dollar, what is your timeline in terms of how China will move, how they will potentially strike, how they will, uh, what's their next move to hurt America? Well, the virus now, you'll notice that the Chinese and the Russians closed their border that makes me very ill at ease. It means that the Chinese may have prepared a more lethal iteration of the virus that kills a larger percentage of people to create more panic. It might not kill that many more, but it, it, it you know, imagine a virus that kills 25% of the people that get infected. This is contagious as a common cold. And they release it into our population and our scientists look at it and say, well, it's just a mutation of the other virus. Of course, it's a mutation. If they made a slight change in this virus in their lab, we wouldn't be able to tell it from a natural occurrence. Open borders on the south, they could walk right in. They could walk right in. We have open borders, they don't. And you see, the fact that the, you have to ask yourself, why would China and Russia, the two of the largest countries in the world, the largest country in land area and the largest country in population, why would they close their border absolutely from anyone coming in? This is an extraordinary measure at this time that no other country has taken that I know of. Uh, but it is, it has this, this one military implication that some worse form of this is coming and they don't want it to blow back on them. Now, I, I could easily be wrong on this. This is just a, uh, a, um, a concern, which I think military people should be looking at. I don't think we, we if we should have a, a more uh, dangerous iteration of this virus in North America, we should not by any means uh, we should assume it's an attack from China. It should be automatic. I mean, I think if I were the president, I would tell the Chinese, you better hope we don't get sick with something worse because we're going to attack your new, your your strategic and conventional forces with nuclear weapons. And we're going to uh, decapitate your leadership. So you better not hit us with anything worse. And you better hope that this thing doesn't mutate to be worse because we're holding you responsible. Now that's a, that's a terrifying thing to do, but I think to protect the country, those kind of threats have to be made because these people believe that we are, you know, um, soft, that we're easy, that they can roll over us because they've rolled over us for decades. I'm sorry, they have. They got into our universities, into our labs. They've stolen us blind. They've had this unequal trading relationship for uh, with us all this time. And the minute Trump comes in, raises tariffs, tries to correct it, they do what? They release a virus on us? Oh, tell me that's a coincidence, please. Well, it's an interesting, it's a brilliant strategy, isn't it? They release this more innocuous type of vi uh, virus first, let it go out, and then if they had subterfuge coming in from the southern border, whatever the case may be, to release the harder virus, then they've already shut down their border and their friends like Russia and North Korea also have shut down their virus, the, the yeah. borders. Then you would have that spread in the U.S. Uh, and maybe other related countries, but 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 they would be unaffected by that, and they could just watch us die, and then of course just take o take over by land. They could actually start invading you, by you, land that's, easily. That's right. You you got it exactly. See, that would isolate the U.S. You know, Lenin said in 1920 that uh, the last capitalist dinosaur would be uh, the United States, and they would isolate it, surround it, and basically starve it out. Um, but this is even better. This isolates us in a way that makes us a pariah in a way nobody had figured we would be the leper of countries. Nobody'd want to have an open border to us. Nobody would allow any of us to, to go there. 
and so this would be this would be the thing that would would occur um <clears throat> so uh the problem is uh uh um the problem is that we have to understand what we have refused to understand. We want to cling to this uh, nice way of life, to this shopping mall regime that we've got. But it's been an illusion. And the communists have been there all along, playing on our illusion for this happy future utopian kind of world, infiltrating us with socialist and left-wing ideas that, uh, that basically make us vulnerable to their attacks. And they've been building up their military, both the Russians and the Chinese, uh, you, you probably saw the Stratcom commander, um, uh, Admiral Richards testimony on the 27th of February, I believe it was in front of Congress, where he said, look, we're dealing with, uh, 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 overaged nuclear missiles on our side and, and, and nuclear weapons past their shelf life. And, um, <clears throat> the Chinese and Russians have modern warheads, modern missiles, modern systems. Uh, it, we're just a couple of years away from, uh, losing our nuclear deterrent from obsolescence from, you know, nuclear weapons have a shelf life. They don't work forever. And uh, at some point they just cease working and we're at that point and they need, they need a trillion dollar uh, influx to rebuild our nuclear infrastructure. We don't even have a manufacturing base yet. We're trying to build it and we're doing it on such a slow plan. We're not going to have a new nuclear warrant until 2025. And that's, that's not soon enough. Well, you know, Mr. Nyquist, I mean, it's so amazing to get your insight on, on all this. And I know you've been covering the Chinese Communist Party for many, many years. Um, it's, such a, it's such a great honor and privilege to be able to talk with you and pick your brain about this. And of course, we pray that it doesn't end up in that way. But unfortunately, um, the Chinese have been increasing their arsenal. And we've been talking about that to South Korea for over a decade now. And... Um, Unfortunately, that time is the, the time of window. The window is is getting smaller and smaller in terms of what we can do. Um, let people know how to support your work and also what uh, websites to follow you on. Uh, JRNyquist.blog, J-R-N-Y-Q-U-I-S-T dot blog, uh, JRNyquist.com, J-R-N-Y-Q-U-I-S-T dot com. Uh, I've got archives at World Net Daily, Sierra Times, Financial Sense, um, and I write for Epoch Times. Uh, and of course, um, oh, Amazon, they could buy books that I'm either co-author or author of on Amazon. And at jrnyquist.com, they can also order. I've got a couple hundred copies of The Origins of the Fourth World War left. Um, that book basically sold out from the publisher, but I have some left. I guess somebody was telling me it was going for $225 on Amazon used copies, but uh, I can sell them for 25 bucks uh, here. <laughs> Evidently, I always knew that would happen if, if events took this turn. And I, I do feel that what we're going through now is always inevitable and that we did not have the foresight to, uh, to see that uh, we built our house on the sand like the uh, song says uh, we were very foolish and we should have been paying attention and honest with ourselves about what the facts were about our enemies well there really are predators and wolves in this world and it is incumbent upon the good nations and the good people to be aware of them absolutely right um, thank you mr nyquist for joining us what a blessing we'll be right back with a short break folks stay with us on the king's report